Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 action movies we never got to see. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? For this list, we'll be looking at action movies that were canceled or unreleased for various reasons, no matter how far along in production they were. However, we won't be including superhero movies, as we already have a list of those. Seriously though, give Batgirl a chance. Which of these action films would you like to have seen? Share your thoughts in the comments. Number 10. The Brazilian Job Released in 2003, the remake of The Italian Job included a fun heist premise and a stellar cast of Charlize Theron, Mark Wahlberg, Edward Norton, and Jason Statham. It was a decent hit for Paramount, which means a sequel entered pre-production soon after. Hello? I want to see the look on that man's face when his gold is gone. Shooting for the Brazilian job was meant to begin in early 2005, but despite the script going through a few drafts and most of the cast signing on, it never got there. I think it's time to move on, don't you? They shut him down. I wish they'd do the same to you. According to Statham and co-star Seth Green, management changes at the studio affected the project to the point where it became a non-priority. Steve, what the hell are you doing? I made a few plans of my own. Although Paramount never officially canceled it, it seems pretty unlikely we'll ever see the crew return for the Brazilian job. The helicopter routine, I mean, that was pretty damn good. But now I've got the gold. Number 9. Empires of the Deep Empires of the Deep began as the brainchild of John Jiang, a Chinese real estate mogul, and was a significant US-China co-production with a budget of around $130 million. The plot chronicled eight mermaid kingdoms trying to maintain peace during the return of an old evil and starred Olga Kurlenko as the mermaid queen. Our only hope lies in the prophecy. Jiang's clashes with crew members led to three different directors and ten screenwriters, and working conditions were described as unsafe in a variety of ways. A trailer in 2012 was met with immensely negative criticism, and the film never made its 2013 release date. We've been waiting generations for this moment. Reshoots reportedly happened in 2014, though it failed its crowdfunding campaign in 2016 to improve special effects. It seems this one will stay buried in the deep. Number 8. Halo While Microsoft's sci-fi FPS series did get a TV show in 2022, that was far from the first adaptation attempt. A film entered production in 2005, and some pretty impressive names were attached. With the script from acclaimed sci-fi screenwriter Alex Garland, Peter Jackson attached as producer, and Fox and Universal co-financing, things seemed to be well on track. Sadly, they didn't stay that way. You don't mean that. You can't leave. Foxing Universal ended up backing out of the project, and with no financing, it soon died. However, it was somewhat reborn when Jackson and then newcomer director Neil Blomkamp repurposed its props to create the Oscar-nominated District 9. Thank you, boy, and go home. You have to make it. Don't let me go through all of this and not make it. You understand? While undeniably a brilliant sci-fi film, Baumkamp's work on official live-action shorts for Halo 3 showed he was right for the job. Package retreat! Need immediate evac! Over! Package retreat! Roger that, Team 2. Number 7. Gladiator 2 as of 2022, a follow-up to Ridley Scott's brilliant Gladiator is in development but we'd be lying if we said we wouldn't have been extremely curious to see one of its proposed sequels. Don't you need good men like you? How may I be of service, Marcus? Ideas for a follow-up began forming in 2001, chronicling Maximus's resurrection by the Roman gods, but it was a draft by singer-slash-songwriter Nick Cave that took it to another level. There was a dream that was Rome. It shall be realized. These are the wishes of Marcus Aurelius. Free the prisoners! Go! Out of fear of the rise of Christianity and how it was draining their power, 
the deities would have revived Maximus to kill Jesus and his disciples. As an eternal warrior, it would have shown him fighting throughout historic events, including the Crusades and World War II. That wild premise may have been a bit much for some, as the script was rejected. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Number 6. True Lies 2 Is there anything you want to tell me before we start? Yeah. I'm going to kill you pretty soon. 1994's True Lies was a critical and commercial darling and remains one of James Cameron and Arnold Schwarzenegger's best. Let's go. I married Rambo. Following the release of Titanic, Cameron began work on a sequel with Schwarzenegger, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Tom Arnold all set to return. The script was finally finished in early 2001, but the World Trade Center attacks on September 11th ensured that it would never get made. The sequel was set to follow in the same comedic footsteps of the first, which made light of terrorism and even featured an airplane sequence. Cameron understandably scrapped the project entirely and has remained steadfast on the decision since. While we would have liked to see the sequel, we can't fault the reasoning. Call me sometime. My offices are in Rome. I would like that. Number 5. The Mummy, Rise of the Aztec With 1999's The Mummy being a smash hit, sequels were inevitable. Unfortunately, those sequels didn't quite measure up. Ugh, I hate mummies! They never play fair! The third entry, 2008's Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, was panned for lackluster effects and a mediocre plot. On top of that, it made less money than its predecessors. This guaranteed that Universal wouldn't move forward on a fourth, the planned Rise of the Aztec. The plot would have followed the O'Connell clan dealing with an Aztec mummy, played by Antonio Banderas. Maria Bello had supposedly already signed on, and Luke Ford had signed on for an additional three features. Instead, Universal took some time away from the mummy until the 2017 reboot. Hindsight is 2020 though, and we think we would have preferred this one. What the hell are you doing? Yeah, you're right. We've angered the gods. Number 4. Castlevania The Movie We adore Netflix's animated series, but that doesn't mean we can't lament the death of its live-action adaptation. Production on the film began in 2005, with frequent video game movie director Paul W.S. Anderson attached. The script went through several versions, but each would have told the origin of Dracula's conflict with the Belmont family. Unfortunately, it was delayed due to the 2007 to 2008 writer's strike. Anderson left shortly after, as did replacement Sullivan White. Is that any way to treat a lady? James Wan eventually signed on, though Wright's issues ultimately killed it. Although Wan wasn't as big a name in horror as he one day would be, he clearly showed a lot of promise. A Castlevania movie from the guy who gave us this would have been a treat. There was a crooked man, and he walks a crooked mile. Number 3. Blood Meridian Are you carrying the fire? My what? Carrying the fire. You kinda weirded out, aren't you, kid? Cormac McCarthy's novels usually make for great movies, as evidenced by The Road and No Country for Old Men. One that hasn't made it to the big screen is Blood Meridian, though not for a lack of trying. You don't have to do this. People always say the same thing. What did I say? They say you don't have to do this. The Western follows a real-world gang of scalp hunters in the U.S. during the mid-1800s. McCarthy has stated that a film adaptation would be a difficult task due to its extreme violence. Tommy Lee Jones found that to be true in the mid-90s when he couldn't get studios interested due to the content. I didn't kill my wife! I don't care! 
Ridley Scott ran into the same problem in the mid-2000s despite having a completed script. James Franco tried again throughout the 2010s, though rights issues killed it this time. It seems it wasn't meant to be. What happened? What did I do? Take me back! Number 2. Alien Awakening The Alien IP is still going strong, with video games, comics, and perhaps more films. We don't want to sound ungrateful, but we desperately wish Awakening could have been made. Bishop here. I'm afraid I have some bad news. Well, that's the switch. It's very pretty, Bishop, but what are we looking for? That's it. As part of the original series, the fifth film would have actually ignored the events of the third and fourth entries. Instead, it would have been a sequel to 1986's Aliens set 30 years later, picking back up on Ripley, Newt, and Hicks. Are we gonna sleep all the way home? All the way home. Can I dream? Yes, honey. I think we both can. Neil Blomkamp, the poor guy, was attached to direct. However, it was cancelled when Fox decided to solely focus on Scott's prequel series. Watch me. I'll do the fingering. Go on. It wouldn't be the first time a sequel ignored the events of other installments, and it probably would have been better off for it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Crusade Your move, creep. Paul Verhoeven was at the top of his game in the early 90s, having released awesome sci-fi action films like Robocop and Total Recall. I just had a terrible thought. What if this is a dream? Well then kiss me quick before you wake up. The director was set to re-team with Total Recall star Arnold Schwarzenegger on a historical epic chronicling the Crusades. Additional cast members included Jennifer Connelly and John Turturro. Don't do this to me. It's too humiliating. For 70 grand, Herb, you can afford to be humiliated. We have no doubt Verhoeven and Schwarzenegger would have delivered another incredibly violent adrenaline rush. But it also would have been interesting to see Verhoeven's vision of this dark period in history. Cara Loco, the production company attached, had issues over the huge budget and didn't believe in its box office chances. It instead invested in Cutthroat Island, a massive financial bomb that not only killed Crusade, but Cara Loco itself. Congratulations, madam. There's another town you've destroyed. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.